It's cold in Wisconsin and the regular trout fishing season is over, so it's time to study some more entomology. Welcome back to Simple Entomology for the Fly Tire and Fly Fisherman, Part 10. I'm Raj Kletke and today we'll be looking at stoneflies. You can see that this is Part 10 of a series. If you haven't seen the earlier videos, you may want to review those first as there are terms we'll be using today that are better defined in previous videos. We'll be referring to these organisms as stoneflies, but they are in the order Plycoptera, under the class of Insecta. Like other insects, they have six legs and three body parts. Plycoptera means folded wings, which we'll see in the adult shortly. There are multiple species of interest to the fly fishermen, but for right now, we'll just be looking at stoneflies in general. Stoneflies undergo incomplete metamorphosis, so we need to look at the nymph and the adult. Those that have followed these videos know that incomplete metamorphosis implies that the nymph may appear quite different, but does have the same body parts as the adult. The stonefly nymph is usually found under rocks in relatively fast water and can be recognized by the rule of twos. It has two antenna, two wing pads, two tails, and if you look closely, there are two claws on each foot. Incidentally, don't confuse the prothorax that lies between the head and the first wing pad as another wing pad. These features are well maintained in the empty nymph cases that you'll find attached to rocks. When you pick up rocks from the bottom of the stream, you'll find many organisms. You'll not have trouble distinguishing stonefly nymphs from the other organisms which we've discussed previously, but may have some problems distinguishing them from mayfly nymphs. Some mayfly nymphs will be easily distinguished because they have three tails and only one recognizable wing pad. However, even when there are two tails and two wing pads, you can still recognize abdominal gills on mayfly nymphs, which are lacking in stonefly nymphs. Remember the rule of twos and look for abdominal gills, and you won't have problems recognizing stonefly nymphs. The adult stonefly holds its folded wings horizontally across its back. This is in sharp contrast to the mayfly, which holds its wings upright, or the caddisfly, which holds its wings across the back in a pup tent-like configuration. So on the stream, if you find an adult organism with its wings held flat horizontally over its back, it is likely a stonefly. An exception would be a flying ant, which also holds its wings flat over its back, although there are only two wings and the body structure is that of an ant. I don't fish stoneflies near as much as I do caddisflies, which we've discussed previously, or mayflies, which we'll be discussing in a future video. However, there are some streams where fishing a stonefly should be a significant consideration. Obviously, if you've seen stonefly nymphs or their cases, or stonefly adults, you may want to consider fishing a stonefly. As stonefly nymphs do not have gills, they need well oxygenated water. So fishing a stonefly in well oxygenated fast water may make sense, but fishing a stonefly in slow or possibly poorly oxygenated water may not be very rewarding. I seldom fish specific stonefly patterns, but I suspect trout take many of my searching patterns as possible stoneflies. We have to look a little closer at stonefly emergences and specific stoneflies before we can discuss when, how, and what flies we might use. Remember those stonefly cases we found attached to rocks? That's because Stoneflies emerge by crawling out of the water onto rocks or other structures, attach themselves firmly, and then emerge from the nymph case. In other words, these are not open water emergences. Additionally, this commonly happens at night. So fishing a stonefly emergence is significantly different than most mayfly emergences and caddis emergences. We also have to look at some specific families of stoneflies, but we're not going to make it this complicated with names that I cannot pronounce. 
initially we're going to simply divide stoneflies into a large group which I tie most commonly on a size 6 3x long hook and a small group which I tie most commonly on a size 12 or 14. We'll further divide the large and small groups by season and color. A large stone fly in the early season is most likely a giant salmon fly, while in the mid-season is most likely a golden stone. A small stone fly in the early season is likely brown or black, while in the mid to late season is likely a little green or little yellow stone. While the possible season for each stone fly is quite broad as listed, the actual emergence is very short much shorter than you would see with a caddis or mayfly emergence. It just occurs during the time frame listed. If fishing a large stone fly for opportunistically feeding trout, I would likely use a Bitch Creek nymph, either with or without a bead head, or possibly a girdle bug. All would be heavily weighted. If fishing a large stone fly during an actual emergence, I may get a little more realistic with a Kaufman stone or a Brook stone. Again, all heavily weighted as I want to fish these close to the bottom of the stream. When fishing in a searching manner or for an actual emergence for the smaller stone flies, I use common attractor nymphs such as a Prince nymph, a Whitlock squirrel tail, or a Gold Ribs hare's ear. All of these are heavily weighted so I can fish them close to the bottom. I may use bushy stimulator patterns in appropriate sizes for both large and small stoneflies, both during emergence and as searching patterns. I do tie a specific little yellow sally stonefly, however I feel that most of the time a bushy alcare caddis would be adequate. In streams where stoneflies are common, fishing a stonefly nymph as an attractor makes a lot of sense. Stonefly nymphs mature over several years, so there are instars of varying sizes at all times. Additionally, the stonefly nymph lives in fast water and are hunters, so they are commonly knocked into the drift. The size of the nymph you choose can be dependent upon the size of the nymphs that you're finding. But remember that the instars almost double in size in the last year so that if the hatch has already happened, it's best to drop down at least one and more likely two hook sizes for your searching stonefly nymph. Again, be sure to use heavily weighted stonefly nymphs as stonefly nymphs are not good swimmers and you want to fish as close to the bottom as possible. So fishing a stonefly as a searching pattern is quite straightforward, but how do we fish a stonefly emergence when the emergence is out of the water and commonly at night. Prior to the actual emergence, the nymphs will migrate to shore, so swinging a nymph towards shore or still water makes sense. After emergence, the stonefly adult will cling to streamside vegetation where it may fall into the water, making a commotion very similar to a grasshopper. Additionally, the adults do return to the water to lay eggs. So during the relatively brief period of a stonefly emergence, it does make sense to fish the nymph swinging along the bottom towards shore or still water or the adult cast near the shore. But which should we start with? I have no personal experience fishing a stonefly emergence, but I enjoy fishing dry flies, so would likely start with an adult, especially if I see rising fish. Some try to estimate the proportion of nymphs still present in the stream bed versus adults on the vegetation and start with what they feel is most numerous. As with all trout fishing, if your first choice is not working, change methods or flies. As all the flies I use for fishing stoneflies are standard patterns and how to tie them can be easily found on the internet, I did not tie any flies in this video. However, we will tie flies as we start looking at mayflies in the next video simple entomology for the fly fisherman and fly tire part 11. See you soon.